we must discuss how we, how we make Brooklyn better. I believe there are a few things we can do to continue our progress. And how do we do it? Most important, I think Diana touched on it. We have to get back to basics. I remember back in years when I was playing JV football with Bayside. We were winning every year. And then one year, we started losing. It was down here ever since. And the coach called us all in the room and he said, you know, you guys started to get too big on yourselves. You have to learn how to run again, how to catch and throw. But more importantly, you have to learn how to be a team again. Brooklyn has to learn how to be a team again. So that's why I'm announcing today the establishment of Team One Brooklyn. One group, one jersey, one name. All of us coming together. We cannot face the future apart. And we certainly will not get the infrastructure we need, the employees we want, and the better borough we see on different sides of the same fight. One Brooklyn. That's what I did when I moved at the start of my campaign. The first thing we must do is to start listening to people on the ground. I put together a group of 20 different subject areas, and I call them pillars. And I ask experts in each one of those areas to reach out to those who are on the ground with them, if it's education, health care, business, and come with real solutions to answer three questions. What have we done in the past? What are we doing now? And what do we need to do in the future? And that's important to get solutions from people who understand it. We'll use this information to help improve the lives of Brooklynites, and that's what I want my legacy to be. I want to improve the lives of everyday Brooklynites. We have invested in so many things of beauty, now let's, let's invest in beautiful people. And my goal was to make that happen by teaching things as simple as financial liter literacy, healthy food choices, how do we live? We can't continue to raise our children on chicken wings and fried rice. <laughs> they must have access to fruits and vegetables so they can grow up to be intelligent, smart, well groomed adults. And I know it sounds sim simple, but it's not. It would take all of our energy together to be successful. And that's why I would link Borough Hall closely with existing successful organizations to create programs that build lives around those important issues. And you know what the code is for 2014? Collaboration. We cannot continue to have three organizations on the same block doing the same thing that don't even know of each other. We have to collaborate. Resources are limited. You may think that we print our own money, but both Congresswoman Nagla Clark and Velasquez would tell you that the resources coming back to the cities are small. If we don't come together and build one strong organization, we're never going to make it happen. Egos, egos must go to the side. We must be focused on what the ride is about, saving the lives of Brooklynites. That's what it's about. With all of our success, there are still so many people that are hurting. We have to look out for them as well as others and give them the tools to get better. But helping them, it will help us. Too often people are lost and they are in pain. And there's one thing I've learned, Kevin. Hurt people, hurt people. There's a reason that young children are playing a knockout game because we close every center for them to play intelligent games. And the goal is to administer to that pain. So I'm saying to you Brooklynites, both of you who are in the VIP seats and those who are in the other seats that I spoke to earlier, it's time for us to reach out. If you are business, an activist, or just a citizen with time and energy to volunteer, I want you to be part of Team One Brooklyn. Find a position for you to play on the team, we'll find that. We will collaborate and share our resources to become the most powerful advocate for people of this borough. Our ultimate goal is to create, create an environment in this borough where we can raise healthy children and families.
Create opportunity and inspire greatness in any neighborhood and on any block. And here's how Team Brooklyn does that. First thing, we have to volunteer. It's crucial to volunteer. And I think about an organization called uh, a, a multicolor, beautiful organization. They get together and have young people come out and volunteer. And actually it's called Public Color. They get out and have them come and paint various places in the community. They're doing a wonderful job in the process. And when they volunteer, they give back in a very real way. 90% of those children graduate from college on time. 87% are admitted to college. And let me give you another number. 90% of them are families are on public assistance. I'm telling you that volunteer does something to you. It changes your dynamic and it exposes you to the possibilities. When you are helping others, you are helping yourself and you see how you should be grateful for who you are. And Judge Alex Pash and Judge Radix is saying something else to us. You don't have to be public colors. Judge Radix, every Saturday, Bring together, although she's on one of our highest courts, she find time to volunteer on Saturday to bring young people to her home and tutor them for free. All the children in the community can do that. Wow. An amazing task that you're doing, Judge. So what is she saying to us? If you are an accountant, go teach financial literacy to someone. If you are a doctor, go open up a clinic and teach people health care needs. If you are an economist, teach people how they can save to purchase a home and go from living someplace to another place. If you are the Department of Sanitation, show people how to pack their garbage. If you are the Department of Traffic, show people how not to double park and get a summons of hundred dollars. Everybody can get in this game. All you gotta do is do it. I think about Kareem Kamara, what you said one day at your service. He was talking about three frauds. One of them decided to jump. Then another decided to jump. And then Kareem asked the question, how many frogs was left? We all said two and three. We all argued. He says they were all still there because they just decided.